Welcome to labmiss.com in our lab video series on Cisco ACI. This is Metha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of our ACI videos, you can visit our website under the Data Center section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we are going to take you through the first step of building ACI, and that is fabric provisioning. This is the process that you always need to go through when you bring up a brand new fabric, and it is usually the one-time thing if you only plan to have one fabric. So you definitely want to make sure that it is done correctly with scalability in mind. This is the network diagram of our lab that we're going to be using for the rest of our video series. We have two spine switches called LM spine 1 and 2 with the ID of 201-202. Then we have four leaf switches call LM leaf 1, 2, 3, and 4, and their IDs are 101, 102, 103, and 104 in that order. And the leaf switches are connected to the spines as we discussed in the last video. So it's the leaves only connects to the spine and the spines never connects to the spines and we don't see any connections between the leaves either. Down below we have our APIC clusters with three appliances as recommended by Cisco named LM APIC 1, 2, and 3, and they are due home to Leaf 1 and 2. Right, and this is through their 10 gig VIC port 21 and 22. On the management interface, they are connected to an out of band switch called Switch 1, and this is through VLAN 99 with the subnet of 172.16.99.0 slash 24. Each of the servers have two out of band management ports, 11 and 12. Their active standby so it only needs one IP address. And the IP we're using for APIC 1, 2, and 3 is 11, 12, and 13. So they're easy to remember because the last digit corresponds to the APIC server ID, 1, 2, and 3. And then we use 21, 22, and 23 for the CIMC interface IP. Then we have another VLAN, VLAN 32, which is where our Windows 2012 domain controller and we're just going to be using that as our RDP jump box, and that's on the IP address of 172.16.32.40. Right, located on that same switch. So from our Windows 2012, we should be able to access pretty much anything on the VLAN 99. That's going to be our dedicated out-of-band network, yeah, which is usually recommended when you build an ACI out-of-band access, so that way when something happens inside the fabric, it does not affect how you accessed and managed the fabric. Before you can start provisioning your ACI fabric, there are some prerequisites that you need to complete. First of all, you need to have all the hardwares that you need. You need at least one APIC controller for production. I think I mentioned this several times already, a minimum of three APICs are required. Like how we have it right here, the cluster, APIC 1, 2, and 3, and definitely trying to avoid having only two APIC. All right, so one for lab testing and three minimum for production. Then you need to have at least one leaf switch and one spine switch. In our case, we have two spines and four leaves. Then you need to make sure that all the cablings are completed per discussion in the previous videos, as shown in this diagram. I already mentioned about the cabling between the leaf and the spines. And finally, you need to have an out-of-band management network be ready and accessible. So that way, when we bring up the APIC, and assign the IP address, we'll be able to whip into it to start our configuration. Once you satisfy the hardware requirement, you need to note how many APICs you have and start assigning the chassis ID. And the ID is going to start from number one. So the first three APICs will be active in the cluster, one, two, and three. APIC number four and beyond will be standbys. For the spine and the leaves, you need to assign the node IDs. Starting ID is at 100. We recommend the scheme that will help you quickly identify the nodes like we do here with the 200 plus being the spine and then anything within the 100 range will be the leaf. Of course, it depends on how many spine and leaves that you may have the network. The chances are you might not have any more than 100 spines, so the ID of 200 range will work just fine. All right? If it's the same is true for the leaf, then the 100 range should work as well. Otherwise, you might need to use the 300 and above. Then you need to gather other necessary information like hostname, device models, and particularly serial number. 
It's going to become very useful when we start the fabric discovery so you know that when a switch popped up in the interface you know exactly what switch on this diagram that would be. So you can assign the appropriate ID to them. So I certainly recommend you create some type of design diagram like we have here without these information written on this so you'll be ready to go. Just a quick note, the ID for each switch as well as the serial number and then some of the required parameters which we'll step through in the uh, APEC initialization. Yep, with all the appropriate IP addresses or for out of band because that's something we need to assign to our APEC. And hopefully you already have the CAMC initialized. That's one thing that we're not covering here, which is initializing your CMC, assigning the IP address, and making sure that you have a web access to each of the CAMC on the APEX. All right, the first thing they need to do to bring up a fabric is to initialize your APEC, especially the chassis number one, ID one right here, LM APEC one, and that's what we're gonna be working on first. There's a few things to keep in mind. Our APEC must run the same version. If they are shipped together, chances are they already are. So there's nothing you need to do there. The APECs are discovered in order of chassis ID. So you always want to start with the chassis one. Currently all of our APECs configuration has been erased. So they have no configuration on them and are ready to be initialized. And there's a free way for you to access the command lines, or you can hook up the monitor and keyboard and do the old fashioned way directly to the server using the provided UCS dongle that comes with the box and then connect it that way to get access to the CLI. Or if you have already set up the CIMC, you can open up the web interface CMC KVM as well, which is what we're doing here. And the third option is that if you have the serial overland enable or CMC, you can do it that way as well. And make sure that when you go through the CIMC initialization or configuration, the NIC mode is set to dedicated, which I believe is the default mode. And make sure they are not set or change them to share long. What I am going to do now is to bring up the RDP session to our Windows 2012 jump box. That's where I already have the KVM ready for our APIC number one right here. When you first boot up, the APIC server is going to go through the boot process and then it's going to stop at press any key to continue. And that's where we begin our APIC initialization. Go ahead, hit enter and we'll start the setup utility. And they're just going to step you through a wizard like setup where you all need to do is to provide the parameter as being prompted by the system. And the first one is the fabric name. Or so you can name the entire fabric to whatever you like. Just keep in mind, this is something that you cannot be changed later. So whatever name you pick, just make sure you're going to stick with it. Here we'll call it, let me see, we have a list of parameters right here. So if you review this list, then you can start gathering the information prior to going through initialization as well. Fabric name is one of them. We're going to call it LM-ACI1. Maybe I'll move this to the right a little bit so we can kind of refer it as we go. So LM dash ACI number one. Fabric ID, same thing, kind of be changed later. So you have an option between one and 128. One would work perfectly fine for us. So do fabric number one. 